they've uh, have they sent you any mock paper or something like that no huh? no sir no no mock paper you get it on the website no what is it called yeah, i get there's a name for it rtp mtp ah, rtp rtp division test paper so by the time i just start explaining on how to write the exam for the business law till then somebody can download the rtp paper of this year and the previous years or something like that is that possible who will do that sir i have the copy of rtp question paper who is this sir anu here uh huh okay who is reading then viksha you will be reading you can send it to anugya or you'll share it or you send it to uh, one of them they will you have it in a soft copy or soft copy? copy sir soft, soft copy. copy send it to the host or something you'll have a whatsapp group right yes sir so send it to me. now just uh, tell me what did mehul sir tell you all anything did he tell you all about writing the paper nothing uh, what did he tell you all viksha gangotri he we, we don't have idea about it sir uh. but sir uh, answered the few questions and all that's all who's answering this hmm? gangotri sir gangotri okay devi vaishnavi okay now let me first answer some basic questions before you all even ask that because we have around 2 hours and i want to make your see the most important question which most students ask us how do we write a business law paper now how do you write a business law paper is very simple it's not so complicated it's similar to writing any of your theory papers all of you all have written your second pc some of you all have written your first semester exams correct or no so whenever yes, you write a paper it is nothing business law is also just like any other theory paper and what else is you'll have an advantage because business law is only 60 marks business correspondence and report writing that other paper no english is 40 marks so even if you get around 20 25 in your english you need only around 40 30 how much is the pass mark 50 right 40 sir for our batch it is 40 40 40 but overall should be more than 50 yeah? aggregate should be 50 or yes sir yes sir yeah. so let's take it as 50 even in that case if you score around in english it's so easy to score right you get around 25 there here even if you get 25 you're passed right 25 out of 60 is not so difficult right that's like 40% only right even if you get 30 i'm just telling you the lowest so there is no way in which you can get scared of this paper because it's a very easy paper just like you write now what happens the problem is that when you're thinking how do i write an answer there are two or three question points which arise see what happens is one you should be thorough with what you have studied whatever you have studied at least i have done my two parts right indian contract act and sale of goods act right i have yes, done yes, everything in detail right so if you know the topics clearly if you know what are the essentials of a valid contract what are rules for consideration it becomes very very easy for you to write those answers because it's just a direct question now most of you all don't do well in business law and english is because there is something called as writing fatigue you all don't write see now you all wrote your second pc exams around 2 months back now you are not going to write an exam till your see because that english economics and that other paper which is that other paper which all have with economics maths and stats economics bck maths and stats is just a ticking paper right yes sir okay. and okay. accounts is a paper where you all have to draw those columns ledgers etc right So that yes, also is more a practical question. The only theory paper where you have to write is business law and BCR. So my suggestion is, don't lose. There is something called as writing cramps. What are writing cramps? Is when you start writing in your exam, suddenly your hand starts becoming a little numb. It 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 feels that your hands are paining badly. You won't be able to write properly. Your handwriting becomes ulta pulta. Correct or no? So my suggestion is first to develop your writing skills. make it a point to write at least two or three pages every day something let's say a question is there in the rtp how will you write it so just write it on your own just write it don't see something and don't copy don't take it as a handwriting class but try and write something every day so that when you go to the exam hall where you have to write this a 3 hour paper right yes yes sir it it shouldn't be that after one one and a half hour your hand starts paining you start getting cramps you cramps as you start getting pain your muscles your hand becomes numb and then you have to shake your hand again and again right 
So first thing is get into the habit of writing. So get into the habit of writing by writing for at least one or two pages every day so that you don't miss up. Now, second part is how do you write an answer? Now, that's why I'm going to do only papers today so that you'll get an idea of how to write the answers. The first thing is in your 60 marks, as I told you, around 30, 35 marks is Indian Contract Act and Sale of Goods which Act, which I'm doing. And even if you do, if you take three acts, Indian Contract Act, Sale of Goods and Companies Act, that itself is around 40, 45 marks. Limited liability partnership is only five marks. If you have seen the, have you seen the question papers? Have you seen the format of the paper? Yes. Sir. Question yes, sir. one is compulsory, yes. right? 10 marks, right? Yes, sir. And then you have to write any five out of the remaining six questions, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you have 10 plus 5, 50, that is 60 marks, right? So the format is very simple, question. And mostly the first question will be from Companies Act, Indian Contract and Sale of Goods. You'll have to answer any five. Now, the first thing is, when the first a compulsory question is okay. Now, after you go to the second question, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, out of those six questions, you have to choose any five. Very quickly go through the questions. Now, I also will tell you one thing. In every question, in mostly all the questions, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, those 10, 10 mark questions, six questions, you have to answer any five there will be at least three or four marks of a case study. What of a? Case study. Case study. Mr. Raman sold an article to Mr. Chauhan and he said that the warranty for the product is six months, but after five months, the product stops working. Mr. Chauhan goes, but Mr. Ramesh denies to give him, discuss the case with him. We'll do those. Okay. You have so many question papers of the previous years. All of them have questions. So out of those 60 marks of questions which you have, which you have to attempt, at least 20 to 25 marks will be case studies or at least 22. That means you're actually mugging up part is only 30, 35 marks. What? It's only 30, 35 marks. Means you have to know how to analyze the case study. Okay. So first keep this in mind. There are two things. One, one compulsory question, six questions after that, you have to answer any five. And out of that in every question other than one, I think. So most of the questions, there'll be at least three or four marks of case study. Now, if you're not comfortable with case studies, choose those five questions where the case study marks are less, three marks, seven marks are there of questions, okay, where you have to write, differentiate between, let's say, undue influence and coercion or differentiate. There will be one differentiate question or what are the essentials of a valid consideration like that. Choose those questions, okay? So be careful while choosing the questions. Now, once you'll have chosen the questions, remember, as I told you, there are two types of questions. The first type of question is the theoretical questions. And the second type of question are the case type of questions. What are the case type of questions? For the theoretical questions, always remember I told you, when you're writing the answer, just like you write for any theory, just like your second PUC teachers have told you or your degree teachers have told you, you have to have an opening body and conclusion. What you have to have an what? Opening, body what? and conclusion. conclusion. So example, suppose they've asked you, what are the rights of an unpaid seller against goods? Excuse me, sir. Yes. Good evening, sir. Chin my here. Oh, chin my Tell me, chin uh, yes, uh, uh, good evening to the others also, uh, only for those who assist on their videos, because only you guys are there in the meeting is what I think. Uh, uh, the material has been sent uh, to in the group, Viksha, Viksha, which I, I just heard uh, while I was uh, live streaming, that material wasn't sent. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, material has been sent. Uh, share that uh, material. And uh, it starts with uh, a set of questions from the, it's a compilation of previous year questions. Go through that. And there's this uh, thing called um, a referencer, which is available in the ICA uh, BOD, uh, BOS, that is the Board of Studies. One of you download that too. First, do the questions uh, compilation and then uh, reference it. Devi seems to be puzzled. It's available in the BOS. Then uh, uh, after that, uh, sir will go about uh, in that flow. Uh, I'm sorry for interrupting the class, sir. Uh, I, I just took two minutes. Uh, no others problem. can please switch on your videos. Uh, it's a revision class for you, not for sir. Sir knows what he is teaching. You don't know what you have studied properly, right? So switch on your videos. That's how it is going to be effective. 
Uh, also, sir, I request you to switch on. Yeah, one more thing. Is my video on? Yes, sir. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So. Yes. Yeah. So, if you please switch on your videos, Viksha, see if anybody's videos as many as on. Pratamesh, your videos on. Everybody's video should be on. On it. There are ninety record. ninety people. It's ridiculous mm -hmm. if it's only it. It was not even twenty five before I switched on the video. So switch on your videos quickly and do not switch it off. Viksha, please keep uh, please uh, save uh, screenshots uh, from time to time and send it to eight three one zero two number. Okay. Sir will take action. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay. Sorry for disturbing the class. No problem. And material has been sent, sir. The uh, questions compilation, if you remember, sir. Yeah, yeah, we had done that, right? So yes, we'll check yes. And then the uh, referencer will be available, which you can. Yeah, which uh, referencer Devi Vishnu is downloading? Eh? Yes, sir. Uh, oh. No, I think Viksha Vijay can download it herself. Or Viksha someone Vijay. download it and send it to Viksha. Viksha. You guys have her number, right? No, Anugya okay. has some revision test paper also. Yeah, RTP. Time. Yeah, 2023 RTP also. You guys refer. You refer that. Sir. Anugya, you have sent that eh, to Viksha Vijay. Anugya. Yes, sir. I think. Questions yeah. compilation and uh, 2023 May RTP is uh, what you're supposed, what is uh, suggested yeah. to be done, sir. That that's, what, that's what, that's what, that's more than enough. So RTP, you just send it or download it. A referencer, I'll send for the uh, R to R, which will be one day prior. Yeah, yeah that will be. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Others, you. switch on your videos and uh, pay attention in class, okay? Don't keep your videos off and don't give network issue as the reason it's not acceptable now anymore it's been two years you can manage the network thank you sir sorry thank for disturbing you. the class no problem uh, i have live streamed and recorded sir you can press got it thank you yeah i, I press got it yeah, this one. thank you sir bye ah uh, bye bye so i was telling you whenever you are writing those five questions there are two types of first for first of all you choose the questions properly that's what i told you right choose one if you're comfortable with only answering theory choose those questions which have less marks for practice cases. If you are comfortable with the case studies, then choose the one which is less. Now, second thing, as I told you, there are two types of questions. What are the two types of questions I told you? One are the theoretical type questions, which will tell you what are the rights of an unpaid seller against goods, let's say. What are the rights of an unpaid seller against goods? Right of lien, right of stoppage in transit and right of... What? Right of resale. What right of? You'll remember or you'll forgot everything. You'll haven't studied it. Eh? Hmm? Okay. Now, these are the three rights of an unpaid seller against goods. Okay. Now, how do you write this answer? I'm just giving you a way. I'm just giving you one example and then we will go away. So, you will first write who's an unpaid seller. An unpaid seller is a person who, when the goods are sold on credit, hasn't received his amount after the expiry of the credit period or who submitted a negotiable instrument and negotiable instrument has been dishonored or the payment is on cash and the payment has not been made or he's, the buyer has become insolvent. This unpaid seller, this is the opening, introduction, opening body conclusion. Unpaid seller has rights against goods and write down the three rights, all the three. Then you explain first right of lien in three or four lines. Then second is right of stoppage and transit. Then right of resale. And then you write all these rights have to be exercised by an unpaid seller and they are not mutually exclusive and they can be right. So you have an opening, you have a body and you have a... Conclusion. 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 So all theoretical answers, please, for God's sake, write. How much should you write? How much you write is important, but what is more important is whether you are writing the correct answer with the relevant sections or not. So do you have to write sections? Preferably, please write sections because you will get more marks. And I've been telling you that from the beginning when I've been teaching you also. Go through. If you don't know the sections, don't write it. But if you know the sections, it always gives a better chance for you to score. And I told you, prepare a notebook with all the relevant sections for each chapter so that you remember it. Most of them are very easy. They go in sequence, right? So write down yes, the sections and write down the case studies, name of the case study. You just have to write one line of the case study, whichever is involved, right? And if you do that, the chances of you getting more marks become much higher. So for every theoretical question, I'm repeating, don't ever think that the paper is difficult to write. Opening, give an introduction, give the body of the answer and then give the conclusion. Now, when we do the RTP papers, you will find that the answers are copied directly from the textbook and then you will panic. 
will say, sir, my God, each and every word is similar to the textbook. Now, the person who's write, preparing the RTP and he's writing the answer, he doesn't have the patience to write the answer. So he'll copy and paste. So there may not be an opening body conclusion in those answers. And the answers will be similar. And you'll say, sir, do you have to write word to word? No, you don't have to write word to word. But the concept must be clear when you're writing the answer. answer. So when you see the papers which Chinmay has sent you, you'll find that all the answers are exactly the same from the textbook. So they have copied and pasted it. They have the liberty to do that, right? But you can't remember all the uh, thousand paragraphs in the textbook. Can you memorize the whole thing? No, You're sir. not Shakuntala Devi, no, right? Sir. So you will have to get the points right and you will have to get the concept right, whatever I've explained, and the sections right. One and the sections, right? So that is how you write a theory paper. OBC, supplement it with sections and also give the answer. This is the way you write a theoretical answer. What about a case study? Case study, I've already told you and might be may also would have discussed with you. I told you that, that whenever you write a case study answer and again, when we do the revision test paper and when we do the papers of the previous years, those answers will not have this format. But I prefer you write this format because it becomes easy for you to write the answer and it also impresses the examiner. What are those four parts? Facts the of the case. Facts. Provision, analysis, analysis conclusion. and conclusion. That's all. So write down the facts of the case in two lines. Write down the provisions in the, of the act. At least the provision, which chapter, what it is related. If you don't remember the section, it's also okay. Analysis, what do you think is the root cause of the case? And then write the conclusion for it. Conclusion for that particular case study. The answer. Okay. So now let me give you an example. I'll say, Mr. Sanjay applies for the initial public offer of Nagarjuna Cements Limited. The face price of the share was rupees 10, which was being sold at a premium of rupees 20. And the minimum amount, and Mr. Sanjay applies for 1,000 shares for rupees 30,000. He makes the application on 1st May 2023. However, due to some technical delay, the shares are allotted to him on 15th September 2023 and Mr. Sanjay denies paying the money for the application and refuses the allotment, asking the company to re refund his application money. What? Asking the company to refund his application, application. application money. Discuss this case under the Indian Contract Act or whatever. They give you the act or sometimes they won't give you the act. Now, how will you discuss this? How will you write the answer? Mr. Sanjay applies for shares of Nagarjuna Cements Limited of rupees 30,000, 10 net premium of 20. He pays rupees 5,000 as application money, but the, he applies on 1st May and the shares were allotted to him on 15th September. He wants the money back. Will he be entitled to get the money back? No, sir. Case? Yes, sir, he'll be entitled only to the compensation and not the entire amount. He has to accept the delivery of it. Why? Under which case? What are the facts of the case, provisions of the law? Which law is this? Saitya Jasani? Under which section are you talking about this? You have to substantiate, no? So how will you write the answer? You'll write facts of the case. Mr. Sanjay applies for 1,000 shares of rupees 30 each and pays rupees 5,000. Allotment is made after May, June, July, August, four and a half months on September 15th. Now, provisions of the Act. Now, tell me what provision are you telling me, Sai Tejasini? You have to substantiate. You just can't write the answer. No Facts of the case, provisions of the Act, analysis, conclusion. You'll write provisions of the Act as per what is the definition? I forget the near section four of the Indian Contract Act. Acceptance of any offer must be made within a reasonable period of time. time. And since here the time taken for the acceptance of the offer was reasonably long. And this case is similar to the case of Ramsgate Victoria Hotel Limited versus Montefiore. Then you go to the analysis. In this case, when we analyze it, it took unduly long for the company to accept the offer made by Mr. Sanjay 
and therefore if the acceptance is not made within a reasonable period of time the offer get gets revoked revocation of offer what it becomes revocation of revocation of revocation. offer therefore mr sanjay has every right to reclaim the money from the company as the contract was not complete what as the contract was not complete since the acceptance was not made within a reasonable period of time then you write conclusion mr sanjay will be entitled to receive back the money of rupees 5 1000 understood or no yes, yes or no sir. yes so like that you will write the case so both the ways i have told you how you write a theoretical answer and how you write a case based case study, case case study. study. now you'll have got the idea so first is those four, the format of the paper you understood 10 marks is the first then five questions and then you have to answer any five choose the questions each one will have case studies pay attention limited liability partnership comes for five marks now remember the paper what i'm telling you is 60 plus 10 70 marks paper actually it is out of the 35 40 will come from indian contract act the remaining will come from company act partnership act and limited liability partnership act so out of 70 five marks is for llp the remaining 65 marks is for all the remaining paper then i told you theory opening body conclusion you have to write the points of the case including the section and the case studies and the and the what else and the uh, case study you write the facts of the case provisions of the act analysis and conclusion 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 correct or no okay yes, sir. now viksha she shared some revision test paper i won't be discussing all the theory questions because they are copy and paste but once she shares the material just see the from which chapter they are coming see the case studies how they have answered it but i told you also they have not answered in the way i have told you but if you follow the way in which they answer the question that will be enough and always write every day for 5 5 minutes or 10 10 minutes at least every day so that you'll get the hang of writing understand you have an easy chance to actually clear this foundation and also also get a rank for the institute okay sir just now the revision material is shared so should i read that or rtps how many rtp only one is there no 2023 or 22 is also there no sir anuk has sent you sir it is november 2022 yeah they sent you right okay so what should we do we'll do the you all want to do the rtp first we'll do the revision test paper so you'll get an idea of how the questions come because sometimes questions are similar to the rtp right yes, yes. No? we'll yes. do the november 22 rtp revision test yes. paper and then we will look at the other reference reference papers all that as soon as you start going through the question papers you'll find a pattern of how easy the paper is and how smoothly you all will go from one chapter to the other so don't worry it's very very simple and you can easily clear this only you all have to get the habit of writing and understanding the concept and start studying every day correct or no what vaira lakshmi you are studying yes sir you finished studying Most when is the exam june ah huh? yes sir june yes, when june 24 june 24 oh you still have time no so now you have around one and a half months left right So you all can pull up your socks and study, right? Every day one chapter of maybe law, one chapter of other things, etc. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So please, you all, you all have time, and time is on your side. Today is May ninth, eighth. So you all have around forty-five days. Good. Forty-five, forty-six days, right? What, Pooja? Yes, sir. Studying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're not going to college. You you might be having college exams or something, no? Sir, college has not started. The when? Which college? You are in now. Which which semester? Sir, uh, we will start B Com. You finished se second semester, right? Now you have to do third semester, right? No, sir. I have finished second uh, P. Oh, you finished second P now? Okay, okay. I thought you are in the college already. You put P S, so I thought okay, you are in degree college. You are in P U college. Okay. Now, okay, start week, sir. Sir, this is June twenty twenty three R T P. Full June twenty twenty three. I'll go to the June. This is really new. I mean, I have not seen this RTP. Okay, I have not seen this RTP. So we'll see how it looks like. 
I have seen the last ones and all, which is pretty good. So this is the June twenty. We have got the other RTPs are in the material which he sent you all. Okay. Sir, Nehal sir discussed this RTP, sir. Yes. We discussed sir. the entire yes, RTP, including yes, Indian Contract Act and all. Yes, sir. Okay, so the he briefed then. the everything, sir. Huh? So attended. He briefed out all the questions, sir. Okay, then leave it. Then you go to the which other one did he discuss? Then we will not do this RTP, right? Sir, sir discussed only this RTP, sir. Indeed. Okay, then we will do the November twenty. Do go to the reference material then, no, Vicha? Sir, so uh, we have yes. R two C material now, sir. Huh? R two. R two C, sir. Okay, see that only. Uh, whatever, whatever Chinmay has sent you, right, Vicha? Yes, sir. You have the November twenty twenty two RTP. Sir, it's on the website. You want to discuss that, or you want to go through the okay? Send the material which uh, uh, Chinmay has sent. We'll see what it. Is. She sent you on material, right? Yes, sir. It's a it's revision material. Ah, right. See, see what material is there. We'll go through. They've actually divided the questions chapter wise. What they've divided the questions. So what has happened is the previous year's papers, right? As far as possible, they've tried to. Segregate the previous year's papers into chapters. What into chapters? Chapters. chapters. Okay. So look at that. Then we can share that with them, and they have it already, right? Yes, sir. Mm. So chapter one, Indian, sir, the one thirty-five pages. That's not. So do what? Are, what have they done? Have they? There are question and answers, or what? Yes, sir. It yes, is sir. totally. Yes, One forty-five pages. We can't do. We'll see what we can do. Just read the question heading. What are the things? Case studies we'll do. Any case studies are there? Or the theory questions also there? Sir, it is including both, sir. Okay, so we will do only the case studies first, and we'll see one or two normal answers also, right? And then we'll decide which one have to be done. Read, read uh, quickly. The uh, so first one, Chapter One, Indian Contract Act, eighteen seventy-two, Unit One, Nature of a Contract. No. Uh, July twenty twenty one. State with reasons whether the following agreements are valid or void. Okay, now look at these questions. So these type of questions can also come for you in the exam, right? State whether the following agreements are valid or void. Okay. Read, read. First one, a clause in the contract. Just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on. Okay. State whether the following agreements are valid or void. Just read. First one: a clause in a contract provided that no action should be brought upon in case of breach. Can you have something like that? Any clause can we put in the contract that no contract would? This is. Remember, we did something called as agreements opposed to popular public policy, and we said agreement stifling prosecution. What agreement stifling? Stifling prosecution. So this is not a valid agreement. What this is not, it does not become a contract. What it does not become a contract. Read the answer which they have written. The given agreement is void. Reason as per Section Twenty Eight of the Indian Contract Act, Eighteen Seventy Two. This clause is in restraint of legal proceedings mm -hmm. because it restricts both the parties from enforcing their legal rights. No okay, just one. We just run it again. Just run it. Some
Okay. So section 28, agreements and restraint of legal proceedings. You cannot, this is void. So you'll have to write it the way they are writing the answer. Second question, quickly. Viksha, am I audible? There was a note given. Okay. Yes, sir, you are audible. Leave the note, leave the note. I'm just giving you all a Second brief idea. Second question. Oh. Where two courts have jurisdiction to try a suit, an agreement between the parties that the suit should be filed in one of those courts alone and not in the other. This is valid, I think, so, right? Read yes, the answer. Sir. The given agreement is valid. Reason and so remember, see, if they are asking you whether it's valid or what, first write it is valid and then give the reason for its validity, right? See, the, now there are two courts. Let's say Viksha is in Mumbai and I'm in Bangalore and we fight a case. So I and Viksha agree that the dispute will be resolved in Bangalore High Court, not in Mumbai High Court. That's a valid agreement, but that's a valid agreement. Okay, next one. Reason and agreement in restraint of legal proceeding is is the one by which any party thereto is restricted absolutely. No, no, this from is not a restricting. Okay, go to the next one. Third question: X offers to sell his Maruti car to Y. Y believes that X ha X has only Wagner car, but agrees to buy it. I didn't understand this case. Read the question. X, X offers to sell his Maruti car to Y. Why believes oh, that X okay. has only Wagner, Wagner car. car? This is void, right? Agrees because, to buy it. Because see, Maruti car can be Wagner, it can be Alto, it can be anything. And this fellow thought it's Wagner only, right? No? So this is consensus added him, remember? Yes. Both sir. the parties should agree in the same thing in the same manner, I suppose. Yeah, say. yeah, same. So this is void. Okay, next one. Next question. X, a physician and surgeon, employs Y as an assistant on a salary of 75,000 per month for a term of two years and Y agrees not to practice as a surgeon and physician during these two years. This is a valid agreement. Remember, I told you exceptions to agreements in restraint of trade. Remember agreements in restraint of trade we did again when we did the... In agreements in restraint of trade, there are certain exceptions. What are the exceptions? One, if you're working as an article or an internship, correct or no? One, if it is if you're receiving goodwill at the time of retirement of a partnership. Remember, we did all those statutory, legal. Remember or no? So this is a valid agreement, even though it's an agreement in restraint of trade. trade. See, see the way they are writing it. Okay, next. Hmm. January 2021. Define the term acceptance under the Indian Contract Act 1872. Explain the legal rules regarding a valid acceptance. So this is the one which is there from your study material, right? So see how they write the answer. First, you give the definition of acceptance. Then you give the rules and then give a conclusion. See how they've written the answer. Read it. Don't read the whole thing. Just read. They, have, they will copy and paste it from the study material. But you just see the way they've written. See, read the answer, Viksha. Uh, yes, sir. Section 10 of the Indian Contract Act 1872 provides for the lega legality of consideration and objectives thereto. Section 23 of the said Act also states that every agreement of which the objective or consideration, object or consideration is unlawful what is void. That's the answer sir, to some question B. Sir. Direct questions answers they have not given. Only for case study they have given the answers. Okay. And what is the introduction fact of the case study? Okay, just hold on.
Okay. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. So whenever they ask you those questions, those are direct questions. So you don't have to write that what they've written. I thought the answers are not given for those. So you just write what is the meaning of acceptance under section 2B. What is the acceptance? Then give the rules for acceptance and write one one line for each of them. And wherever possible, give the case study and give the conclusion. Okay. So I'm not discussing the theoretical answers. Go to the next question, Viksha. Mr. S, aged 58 years, was employed in the government department. He was going to retire after two years. Mr. D made a proposal to Mr. S to apply for voluntary retirement from his post so that Mr. D can be appointed in his place. Mr. D offered a sum of 10 lakhs as consideration to Mr. S in order to induce him to retire. Mr. S refused at first instance, but when he evaluated the amount offered as consideration is just double of his cumulative remuner remuneration to be received during the tenure of two years of employment. He agreed to receive the consideration and accepted the EBO agreement to receive money to retire from his office. Whether the EBO agreement is valid, explain with reference to provision of Indian Contract Act 1872. So again, you write facts of the case. Mr. S has been offered some money to retire from his public office. Now remember, he's a government servant, right? And yes. second, you'll write the provisions of the act. This is again agreements opposed to public policy where there is purchase of trading in public office. What trading in public? Office. office where you are asking somebody to retire from his government job by paying him money all such agreements are classified as analysis opposed to public policy and therefore they are null and void. Why? Why? So the conclusion is Mr. D will not be able to and this is a case similar to Muthuswami versus Swaminathan what Muthuswami versus I had done the case law with you also when I had discussed this so you'll have to write that all if you remember the case law if you don't remember the case law it's okay but I discussed the same case law with you when I discussed agreements opposed to public policy. So you'll write facts of the case, provisions of the act, analysis and conclusion. See the way they've answered, Viksha. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Answer. Section 10 of the Indian Contract Act 1872 provides for the leg legality of consideration and objects thereto. Section 23 of the said act also states that every agreement of which the object or consideration is unlawful is void. Mm. The given problem talks about entering into an agreement for traffic relating to public, public office. office which is opposed to public policy. Public mm. policy requires that there should be no money consideration for the appointment to an office in which the public is interested. Such consideration paid being opposed to public policy is unlawful. In That's the given right. case, Mr. S, who was going to be retired after two years, was proposed by Mr. Okay. D. So this to... is the facts of the case. So they have given the facts of the case in the middle, right? But I tell you, write it in the beginning. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Got it or no? My video is on or off? It's off, sir. Oh. I'll try and put it on. Just hold on for some. There's some issue. Yeah. Then go ahead. By Mr. D to apply for volunteer retirement from his post in order in order that he can be appointed in his place. In lieu of that, Mr. D offered Mr. S a sum of 10 lakhs as consideration. Mr. S refused initially, but later accepted the said offer to receive money to retire from his office. This Here should be the Mr. facts of the case. Then provisions, you'll write the section 10 and section 23. Correct or no? Then analysis, you'll write the agreement is null and? Why? Oh. And conclusion, you'll write that Mr. S... Mr. D has no right for enforcing such a contract. Got it or no? Okay. You will understood it, right? I am not going through the whole thing. Got it? But see, even when they write the answer, they will write the facts of the case, provisions, analysis and conclusion. Only thing they will write in a different order. What they will write in a different order. order. You will have to put it in the correct order. Next one. Mr. B makes a proposal to Mr. S by post to sell his house for 10 lakhs and posted the letter on 10th April 2020 and the letter reaches to Mr. S 
on 12th April 2020. He reads the letter on 13th April 2020. Mr. S sends his letter of acceptance on 16th April 2020 and the letter reaches Mr. B on 20th April 2020. Mm. On 17th April, Mr. S changed his mind and sends a telegram withdrawing his acceptance. Mm. Telegram reaches to Mr. B on 19th April 2020. Examine the ref examine with reference to the Indian Contract Act 1872. First question: On which date the offer made by Mr. B will complete? Second sub question: Discuss the validity of acceptance. Third sub question: What would be validity of acceptance if letter of revocation and the letter of acceptance reach together? Okay, so you'll have to go one by one. We won't. They they've just written straight away, right? Or they answered one by one. So, so, one answer answer one by one. One. so the first one is on what are the first question? One Always two. answer these questions. If they're asking in split form, then you don't have to do facts, provision and all. You have to answer one by one only. First one is what? What's the first question? On which date the offer made by Mr. B will complete? When will the offer complete? On behalf of the offer, it is on the day on which the offer reaches the offeree. Offeree. So see, read the answer. According to Section 4 of the Indian Contract Remember, the Section 4 is very important. This is offer, acceptance and revocation. Communication of offer and acceptance is Section 4, right? Okay. Mm. According to Section 4 of Indian Contract Act 1872, the communication of offer is complete when it comes to the knowledge of the person to whom it is made. Mm. The proposal is made by post. Its communication will be complete when the letter containing the proposal reaches the person to whom it is made. Further, Mere receiving of the letter is not sufficient. He must receive or read the message contained in the letter. In the given question, Mr. B makes a proposal by post to Mr. S to sell his house. The letter was posted on 10th April 2020. And the letter reaches to Mr. S on 12th April 2020. And when did he accept but read it? He, he read it on 13th. 13th April. So the offer will be completed on? 13th April. 13th April. 13th April. Correct or no? Okay. Yes. Then now read the second question. Second question, discuss the validity of acceptance. Now see, he made an acceptance on what date? 16th, right? He sent a postal letter on 16th, correct? Yes, sir. But he cancelled his acceptance on what date? 17th. 17th, which, which reached on 19th, right? Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. the revocation of the acceptance was made before the acceptance reached the offerer, right? So the acceptance will not be valid because the revocation of acceptance was made before the before the offeree yeah. reads the letter. Yeah, before the offerer reads the acceptance, correct or no? So on nineteenth, the since it reached on nineteenth, it will be cancelled. Now suppose the third question is suppose both of them reach on the same date. I explained it to you. Whichever yes, so he whichever opens he first, reads, first, 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 whichever he reads first. Okay, so I'm not going into detail. I hope you are understanding all this. Is it yes, refreshing sir. your mind or you'll have been doing something, you'll have been reading or you'll have been just sleeping or doing only accounts, match stats? Anyway, it's good. You're getting an idea of what is there, right? In the previous question paper, so you'll get an idea. Go to the next one. Next question. Comment on the following statements. First one, acceptance must be absolute and unqualified. This is, a, remember, acceptance. If acceptance is qualified, it becomes null and Right. Remember, right. we had done the Neil versus Merit, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, he sends a, a check for half the amount and the remaining he'll send in installments, correct or no? So, any acceptance, if it's qualified, what is an acceptance which is qualified called? Counter offer. What it is called? Huh? Remember the word counter offer? I offer to sell my sari for 20,000, you offer to buy it for 15,000. It's a qualified acceptance. So, then the initial offer becomes null and? White. 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 Next. Second question, acceptance must be in the prescribed mode. Remember, acceptance must be made in the prescribed mode. You have to write that. Or it can be in any other mode. But if the offerer insists that it should be only in that mode, then the acceptance will become null and? Void. 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 I'd given Void. you on the normal. What, Manju Goda? Your understanding? Hello, Manju. Yes, sir. Understanding, sir. Very good. You're writing properly, you'll write you know, in the exam. What I've told you how to write the exam. Hmm? Hmm, next one. Hmm. 
The next question, Mr. Ramesh promised to pay 50,000 to his wife, Mrs. Lily, so that she can. Okay, now one thing I must tell you, some of the answers in the RTP are wrong. Okay. Very sadly, but they are wrong. So this is, I think, so one of those questions where it's wrong because I remember I discussed this and I found that the answer was wrong. Okay. Sir, question is not completed. It's a hmm? complete question. Yeah, we'll see when the question is completed. We'll see whether the answer is right or wrong. Okay, read it, Mr. Ramesh. Mr. Ramesh promised to pay fifty thousand to his wife, Mrs. Lily, so that she can spend the sum on her birthday, on the thirtieth birthday. Mrs. Lily ins insisted her husband to make a written agreement if he really loved her. Mr. Ramesh made a written agreement, and agreement was registered under the law. Mr. Ramesh failed to pay the specified amount to his wife, Mrs. Lily. Mrs. Lily wants to file a suit against Mr. Ramesh and recover the promised amount. Referring to the applicable provisions of the Contract Act 1872, advise whether Mrs. Lily will succeed. Okay, what do you think, Sai Chedeshani? Sure. We'll see course. whether you are right or if their answer is right. Or none. Now we read the whole question. No? What yes. do you think? You understood the case? Yes, sir. Ramesh has a wife, Lily, and he promised to give her on her birthday some amount, right? How much amount you plan to give her? 50,000. And he loves her and he gives it in writing and she makes it registered also. Is this a valid agreement or is it an invalid agreement? Can Lily recover the money from her husband? No, sir, she can't. No, sir, she can't. That is what is called herd mentality. That's why I told you, read the question properly. And don't only look at the answer which is given in the study material. Remember I had done with you in the chapter consideration, no consideration, no contract. When are contracts without consideration valid? Natural, natural love, and, love and affection. When they are in writing, when they are registered, when they are out of natural love and affection. affection. Isn't this isn't Ramesh love his wife? Yes. Sir. Is it in writing? Yes, sir. It is in writing. Is it registered? Yes, sir. That means it's a valid contract. That is why the answer is wrong, what they have given you. Understand? So, this is not a social contract because this was in writing. This was registered. This was out of natural love and exception. This is a contract which is valid even without consideration. 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 Remember? So that's why use your brains a little bit. Sometimes the answers in the RTP are not correct. Hmm. So cancel that answer over there and replace it. This is a contract out of natural love and affection. Hmm. Remember we did a case Ramaswamy versus Venkataswamy. Correct? Yeah. Where this brother agreed to pay the debts of his younger brother. Correct? It was registered, it was in writing, correct? Yes, if it was just like that, if it was not in writing, it was not registered, then it would have been null and void. void. Understood? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Got it. So this answer is wrong. So just mark it off there or write it in your notebook or somewhere you write in your material that the answer is natural love and affection, valid contract. Okay. You'll have to write the facts of the case, provisions of the law. Again, the same format which I told you, analysis and conclusion. What I told you, analysis and conclusion. Conclusion. So this is one of the answers which is wrong. Because remember, I did remember doing it last year. That's why I do. Okay, next one. A shopkeeper displayed a pair of dress in the showroom and a price tag of 2000 was attached to the dress. Miss Lovely looked to the tag and rushed to the cash counter. Then she asked the shopkeeper to receive the payment and pack up the dress. The shopkeeper refused to hand over the dress to Miss Lovely in consideration of the price stated in the price tag attached to the Miss Lovely seeks your advice whether she can sue the shopkeeper for the above case under the Indian Contract Act 1872. Can Miss Lovely sue her, the shopkeeper, or will she win in the no, case? Sir. Yes or no? No, sir. No, why? Who saying a no? statement of price cannot be an offer. Yes, who saying that? Gangotriya, who? Who answered? Sir, Very good. 
what is the statement of a price remember statement of a price or display of goods is only an invitation to offer it is not a valid okay. remember we did the case pharmaceutical society of great britain versus boots pharmaceutical i told somebody had one scratching problem he went and took it and he showed it right so this is a classic case of an invitation to offer when is the offer made when the miss lovely gave it to the shopkeeper it's an offer now it's up to the shopkeeper to accept the offer or not display of goods with a price tag is only a statement of a price or it's an invitation to offer what it is an invitation to offer yes or no do you all remember this yes sir i have done all the and if you would have written the case study pharmaceutical society of great britain versus boots case chemist you will get more marks right because this is similar to that yes yes sir yes correct or no next 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 question explain the modes of revocation of an offer okay. as per the indian contract this is there are some eight modes of revocation i hope you all know so you'll have to write what is revocation write down all the eight modes eight are there no yes sir yeah and then you write the conclusion revocation means cancellation all of you all who haven't studied seven are there seven na seven na i'm so sorry okay seven modes of revocation check it up if if you all have the time when you are going through this revision test paper see the question that right of the page number of that where it appeared this answer so it will become easier for you to refer during the exam time okay hmm what so, some people got rank and all in puc over here in the batch shetty sir was telling yes sir is what rank diksha you got sir, a sir fifth rank you got a I the see. highest uh, you No, sir. No, sir. Second rank, Danyashree uh, Rao. Third oh, rank, Samantha. But uh, fourth oh, oh, wait, rank. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see the name. She's not the... here. What's her name? Danya. Danyashree Rao. Yes, sir. I don't know where is she from. Sorry. She's from Bangalore. Maybe, maybe, maybe Mangalore. Mangalore. And the third rank is. Third rank is Samantha. But where is she from? He's there. Eh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi, Samantha. Hi sir, how much you got? Total five ninety five sir. Out of six hundred, ah, huh? where are you from? Sir, Bangalore sir, Kumarins College. Very good, very good. Keep it up. And then who is the next one? Sai Tejaswini fourth rank. Hey, congrats, Sai Tejaswini. How much you got? Five ninety four sir. Five ninety four, ah, you are from the BMS. For... Yes sir, I have applied for revaluation sir. My principal mom told it. Yeah, so you might get five ninety six, five ninety seven like that, huh? Yes, sir. In business, I had got ninety seven, so I had applied for the valuation. Oh, so so if you get even three marks more, you can go to second or third rank, huh? Yes. The highest first rank for some girl, she got six hundred on six hundred, I think. Yes, sir. High yes. bus. Hmm, that all. And yeah. Okay, then who else got next rank? You. The huh? so next, yes, sir. How much you got? Five ninety. Five ninety three. You are also BMS, huh? No sir, Seshar Kumar College, Kerala. Okay, okay, Seshar Kumar College, five ninety three, and then next was Krupa Shriniti and uh, Amok. Who Krupa? Sir. Who who? Hi Krupa, you got a. Uh... Yes sir. Which college are you in, Shriniti? Kumarans College. College, how much you got? Five ninety two. Yes sir. Very good, and then last was who else other than that? That's all. No? Amog was there. Hi, Amog. Hi, sir. How much you got? Five ninety one, na? Five ninety, sir. Where? Which college? P S, sir. Very good, very good. Sir, you Kirtana U. Huh? You in Kirtana U? Kirtana U. Hello, sir. Which college, Kirtana? B M S, sir. B M S, sir. So so many ranks, sir. B M S and all that. You all got many ranks, sir. Tejasini. Yes, sir. In our college, we got four ranks, sir. From commerce, three ranks, and from arts, one rank, sir. That is you, Kirtana. Then that girl used to sit next to you, no? In that uh, class, she Shilpa. Ah, uh, no, sir. Deepika. She is uh, in degree, sir. Oh, degree. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Very good. All of you. Okay. Now let's come back to business law. So, what was the question you just now read out, Vikshan? Sir, explain the modes of revocation. Okay, of so remember, this is you'll have to just write down the page number and all. Okay, next one. 
Next question. Next uh, question. Define an offer. Explain the essentials of valid offer. How Again, an offer I've, is different I've, from so, the invitation. So remember, all these questions are direct questions. If you are comfortable learning these, answer that. Define an offer. You write an act as per section two A or whatever. Correct or no? When one person, hmm. okay, write down the definition of offer. A definite define means as per the Indian Contract Act. Essentials of valid offer. All that. Remember opening body conclusion. Always write this. And if it's five or six marks. Preferably write at least one side of a page or one and a half sides of a page. Correct? They will see the content. Correct? And if you elaborate one one line, you have. But you have to be very careful with the timing also, right? See, you all have sixty marks of uh, business law and forty marks of English, right? Yes. Sixty sixty percent of three hours. That is one eighty minutes, right? One eighty sixty percent is around hundred and eight minutes. So around one hour forty five minutes you should be spending on. No. Law and one hour fifteen minutes you should be spending on. BC. BC. So don't get too carried away writing and then you'll find I have only forty five minutes to do English and all that. Correct. Mm. So be a little careful while planning your paper. Okay. So that's why I told you practice writing. Practice writing fast and practice writing neatly and underline the answers because the person when he corrects your paper he will also look at your presentation. Right. Hmm. Next. A sends an offer to B to sell his second car for one lakh forty thousand with the condition that if B does not reply within a week, he A shall treat the offer as accepted. Is A correct in his proposition? It's not correct. Should... No silence cannot be treated as acceptance. Remember, we did that case yes. Elsa versus Bindley, yes, that uncle and that nephew. Correct or no? Yes, sir. he told his horse and all that, right? So you'll have to write the provisions of the act, and you'll have to write that mere silence is no, not acceptance. Acceptance. So if he says you cannot reply, that is not a valid. And also in the offer, essential condition, an offer must not condition a term the non-compliance of which leads to acceptance. Remember, we have done it both, right or no? So write both the essential val uh, rules of a valid offer and valid acceptance. Next, next. Explain the type of contracts in the following agreements under the Indian Contract Act, eighteen seventy-two. Mm. First sub question: A coolie in uniform picks up the luggage of A to be carried out of the railway station without being asked by A, and A allows him to do so. Implied contract. Remember, we had done this. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Second. Second sub question: Obligation of finder of lost goods to return them to the true owner. Quasi contract. Remember. Section sixty-seven or sixty-eight? I don't remember. Quasi contract. Remember, a finder yes. of lost goods is under the quasi. Yes, sir. Quasi contract. So the first one is implied contract. Second one is quasi contract. Then, a, a a contract with B, owner of the factory, for the supply of ten tons of sugar. But before the supply is affected, the fire caught in the factory and everything was destroyed. So what happened? This is void, void, void contract. contract. Hmm. Yeah. Next question is define the term acceptance. Discuss the legal provisions relating to communication of acceptance. Okay, this is also a direct question, right? So you'll have to define acceptance and essentials of a valid acceptance. These are all direct questions. So check up in the question paper and the study material. Next. Next is unit two consideration. In light of the provisions of the Indian Contract Act, eighteen seventy-two, answer the following: Mr. S and Mr. R made contract wherein Mr. S agreed to deliver paper cup manufacture machine to Mr. R and to receive payment on delivery. On the delivery date, Mr. R didn't pay the agreed price. Decide whether Mr. S is bound to fulfill his promise at the time of delivery. Does he have to pay? Remember, reciprocal contracts. If one person doesn't fulfill our obligation. The second one also need not fulfill his obligation. Obligation. These are reciprocal contracts. Remember, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. Next one. Next one. Second sub question: Mr. Y given loan to Mr. G of INR thirty lakh. Mr. G defaulted the loan on due date and debt became the became time barred. After the time barred debt, Mr. G agreed to settle the full amount to Mr. Y. Whether acceptance of time barred debt contract is enforceable in law? 
Yes. Remember, this is again no consideration, no contract, right? Yes. Did, when you are agreeing to pay, what is the time bar debt? Where the debt has been due for more than three years. What for more than three years and no case has been filed. What no case has been filed. But if you allow to pay back a time bar debt, it is a valid contract. What it is a valid contract. Remember, repayment of a time bar debt. We did no consideration, no contract. Remember, natural love and affection, voluntary, gratuitous acts, correct or no? Time bar debt, natural gift, agency. You all remember or no? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is a valid contract. You'll have to write the sections, everything. I'm just giving you a brief idea, but you'll have to do all the work on your own, right? You'll have to read this. And if you have any doubts, you can always ask me back. Yeah, go ahead. Third sub question A and B entered into a contract to supply unique item, alternate of which is not available in the market. A refused to supply the agreed unique item to B. What directions could be given by the court for breach of such contract? Remember when we did breach of contract, we did remedies of breach of contract. Do you remember? What were the remedies of breach of contract? Damages, correct or no? And yes. if there is an item which cannot be replaced, there is something called a specific performance. What it is called? Specific performance. So if it was mangoes or something, you can ask for damages, the difference between the contract price and the sale price. But if it's a unique item which you cannot buy anywhere, what do you have to do? You'll have to ask him to supply that is called specific performance. Remember remedies of breach of contract, injunction, specific performance, correct? Damages. Yes or no? Yes. Quantum merit. We have done yes. that, right? So this will be the court can ask them for specific performance because this unique item cannot be bought anywhere else. Understood or no? Yeah. Hmm. Next question, state the exceptions to the rule An agreement without consideration is void. Okay. An agreement without consideration is void. So this is again, no consideration, no contract exception, natural love and affection, which I just now told you, right? So explain what is consideration, explain when it is valid. There are some six or seven ways in which it is. Even when there is no consideration, it's a valid contract. Okay. Hmm. Next question, no consideration, no contract comment. Same. Next. Mr. Mohanlal sold 10 acres of his agricultural land to Mr. Mohanlal Mr. on Mohanlal. 25th. He sold it to himself. Huh? So that's what's Mr. Mohanlal sold. Sir, it is Mr. Choti. Mr. Choti? Yeah, sir. Who's telling this? Sir, because, uh, sir, it is in the answer, sir. It is Mr. Mohan Lal and another person is with that name. Sir. Okay, so Mr. Choti. Who sold? Mr. Mohan Lal sold to Mr. Choti. Read yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, Viksha, forget it. Yes, Mr. Mohanlal sold 10 acres of his agricultural land to Mr. Choti on 25th September 2018 for 25 lakhs. The property papers mentioned a condition amongst other details that whosoever purchases the land is free to use 9 acres as per his choice, but the remaining 1 acre has to be allowed to be used by Mr. Choti, son of the seller for carrying out farming or other activity of his choice. On 12th October 2018, Mr. Mohanlal died, leaving behind his son and life. On 15th October 2018, purchaser started construction of an auditorium on the whole 10 acres of land and denied any land to the son. Now, Mr. Choti wants to file a case against the purchaser and get a suitable re redressed. Discuss the above in light of provision of Indian Contract Act 1872 and decide upon Mr. Choti's plan of action. So that that's not Mr. Mohanlal, it's purchaser. Okay, then purchaser. So, now remember again when we were doing uh, uh, no consideration, no contract, correct? Or when we were doing when can a stranger to a contract sue? 
Remember, there was something called as covenants running with the land. Remember, I told you some rules and agreements which are entered into when the contract is made. I told when you buy a land and you construct, you have to pay municipal taxes. So if you sell the land to somebody else, you cannot tell the municipal authority the earlier person did it. So I will not pay the municipal. Remember covenants running with the land. You're like, remember that stranger yes, to a contract. Sir. So this is a covenant running with a covenant is any rule. So here the purchaser, the seller had made a covenant. Covenant means he made a rule that only nine acres can be used and one acre has to be used by for farming. Now, the after the death of the person, you cannot go back on that covenant because even if it is made by the earlier seller, the present sellers are bound by the covenant of the land or they are bound by the covenant of the land. The land. So here that Mr. Choti, he can sue Mr. Mohanlal and he can tell his wife and sister that it, as per the law which was entered into with my father or with your father, Whatever rules are there, they have to continue or they have to continue. So he'll win the case. This is stranger to the contract. Remember, he done stranger to the contract and stranger to the consideration. Yes or no? Yes. Family settlement agreements. And one of the last one was covenants running with the land. What it was? Covenants running with the land. land. Okay, next, next. What do you understand by the term consideration? Are there any circumstances under which a contract under the provisions there will be of the two R2C contract. classes, only one R2C class. Uh, there will be one more, no? Sir, according um, to the timetable, only today is your class. Okay, very good. Then we'll see how much are we can finish. I thought by 7.30 we'll start sale of goods. So this is going on and on. Anyway, other things are, most of the things are similar. Go ahead, next. Mehul says, uh, syllabus is completed, that R2C session. Hmm. Today was yours and tomorrow Shashank. That's what That's you want in the timetable. Very good. So let us complete it. So even if I'm not discussing all the answers, y'all are getting the gist of how to write the answers. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I will not discuss all the answers. I will wind up at 8 o'clock. So this is the way in which you answer the question. I've already told you the first half an hour. So please follow those rules. Okay. Go to the next question quickly, Viksha. Whichever ones we can complete, we'll complete. Okay. What do you understand by the term consideration? Are there any circumstances? Yeah, this is a theory question, right? Yes, only a person who is party to a contract can sue on it. Explain this, again, this statement this. and describe its exception. Same, same question asked, stranger to consideration, stranger to contract, right? This is yes. another way of asking. The same question may be asked in two different ways. Got it or no? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Next question, to form a valid contract consideration must be adequate. Come uh, it need not be adequate, remember? Yes, sir. Hmm. When we did the Next legal is, rules. Hmm. You need three other essential elements of a valid contract. Uh -huh. Define misrepresentation and fraud. Explain the difference between the fraud and misrepresentation. Always they will generally ask one differentiation. I've already told you misrepresentation and fraud, undue influence and coercion. Got it or no? Hmm? Yes, sir. Yeah. Huh. Examine with reason that given statement is correct or incorrect. Minor is liable to pay for the necessary supply to him. Yes, remember this is a quasi contract. We had done two cases, no Nash versus Inman and Roberts versus Gray. Remember that man taught that billiards and all. You'll have to mention the case laws and you'll have to mention the section, right? So this is a quasi contract. Any liability supplied to a minor for necessities of life will be treated as a valid contract. 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 I hope you all remember. Even if you all don't remember, I think so. You'll have the video recordings. You all can always look at that or you can read that. I understand, or you can listen to that. Got it? Hmm. Sir, next question is define fraud, whether mere silence will amount to fraud as per the Indian contract. Again, this is also given as per your textbook, right? These are all theory yes. questions, right? Yes, sir. Hmm. So, next theory question, explain the concept of misrepresentation. Now, what are you doing, Vicha? You are joining Ames College eh, in the evening. Yes, sir. What about you, Tashai Tejasini? Yes, sir. Even I'm joining Ames College itself, sir. Ames College, yeah? Evening, sir. Okay, then who else is there? Who is joining Ames? Pooja, you're joining Ames. Devi Vaishnavi. Devi Vaishnavi, you're joining. Uh, Devi, how much you did in PUC? You did well. Sir, she's a CBA sister. Huh? Uh, I did not get my, get my results yet, sir. I'm from CBSE board. Okay, when is it coming? 23rd of this month. Very good. You're in Kumaran, sir? No, sir. Mahila Seva Samaja. Okay, okay. So that is, uh, what is it called? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So that is also you are also joining AIMS. Who is joining AIMS? Yes, sir. Who? Yes, sir means Gangotri. Eh? No, no, sir. I told I'm joining. No, very good. Who else? Gangotri, Please how are you, joining. Gangotri? Gangotri is in degree, I think. No. Yes, sir. I'm good, sir. No good. Uh. I knew you were good from the beginning only. You are awesome. Why you are good? You're super. I mean, you are. <laughs> I'm good. In that America, they use that word. Suppose you tell you want coffee, no? They'll say I'm good. I, then one American came. I asked him, "You want coffee?" He said, "I'm good." I told him, "I'm asking you want coffee." He again is saying, "I'm good." I'm good means I didn't understand. That means he doesn't want coffee. Means he'll say, "I am." In USA, they tell like that, no? What? Gangotri went to USA and came. No, sir. But your first question was, "How are you?" So I answered. Okay, like that. Uh, see, this is called. Uh, Question by question, you're good. If you yes. you're, you're awesome, say I'm awesome, sir. I'm super. Tell I'm super. I'm super yeah. Gangotri. I'm. Su hmm. She's put on a video. No, sir. Why Gangotri? Chinmay came. She'll get very angry. Then you're the host and all. Sir, from past five minutes, I have some network issues. Okay, before that, it was on. Yes, sir. Okay, no, it's not coming back. Sir, okay, I have I to wait for another fifteen minutes. There is some problem here. Okay, okay, not an issue. Okay, Viksha, you are also good. Huh? Sir. In English, English they'll use some some words. I'm good. Uh, and then suppose you ask somebody i ask that uh, person can you give me your laptop he say i'm afraid i can't give you my laptop why you have to feel afraid if you don't want to give and they'll use words like that no i'm afraid i'm good what say they just okay read the next one quickly Sohna induced Suraj to buy his motorcycle, saying that it was in a very good condition. After taking the motorcycle, Suraj complained that there was there were many defects in the motorcycle. Sohna proposed to get it repaired and promised to pay forty percent cost of repairs. After a few days, the motorcycle did not work at all. Now Suraj wants to resign the contract. Decide giving reasons. Can he resign the contract? Definitely, because they. Read the answer for this, no, Viksha, because I have a feeling some of these cases, right, which are given to you, even though they're given under Indian Contract Act, they are overlapping with Sale of Goods Act. What they are overlapping with? Sale of Goods. So, have they mentioned under the Indian Contract Act? Have they mentioned that in the question? No, sir. Remember, we had done something called as implied condition as to merchantability of the goods. when we did sale of goods act that they should be usable it cannot be defective does anybody remember implied conditions and warranties yes or no in sale of goods act implied condition as to title of goods condition as to wholesomeness condition as to merchantability condition as to quality or fitness yes or no you all remember am i audible yes sir yeah so sometimes these type of questions they somewhat overlap with the sale of goods act so it doesn't mean that you don't you can write if you know the indian contract write that but what happens is when you actually become a lawyer right suppose tomorrow you all decide to become a lawyer so when you see a person fighting a case he doesn't fight only on the base of one law you'll say indian contract act section 7 read with the sale of goods act to section 23 so in the exam also you need not stick to only one act if they mention the question i explain under the provision of indian contract act you write indian contract act. but if they ask you discuss this answer you can discuss it on both ways on the base of indian contract act as well as on the base of sale of goods and is what i'm trying to tell you yes or no yes so this looks like an overlapping case but anyway read the answer no viksha quickly 
in the instant case the aggrieved party hmm. in case of misrepresentation by the other party Arthur can Arthur. avoid or resign the contract yeah. this is misrepresentation he and also a misrepresentation and also it is an implied condition as to merchantability what is an implied condition as to merchantability in the sale of goods act what in the sale of goods you cannot give a remember we had done one case jackson versus rotax motor horns the cop, horns were dented and correct mm. okay doesn't matter so this is misrepresentation you write this if you want you can write one more line it can also be interpreted under the sale of goods act okay go to the next question p sells by auctions to q auction to q a horse which p knows to be unsound the horse appears to be sound but p knows that the unsoundness of the horse is this contract valid in it is valid remember we had done that ward versus hobbs he sold those pigs mere silence is not yes. fraud or mere silence is not fraud next 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 quickly quickly The next question: Mere silence is not fraud, but there are some circumstances where the silence. You have to read this. Your theory question. Your theory question. Next was a theory question. A student was induced by his teacher to sell his brand new car to the later at less than the purchase price to secure more marks in the examination. Accordingly, the car was sold. However. The father of the student persuaded him to sue his teacher. State whether the student can sue the teacher. This is undue influence. Remember, when one person is in a position to dominate the will of the other, and he uses that position to obtain an unfair advantage over the other. Yeah. So the contract becomes voidable. What it becomes? Voidable. Voidable. Mm. Next. Explain the circumstances in which the person is deemed to be in position of to dominate. the will yeah. of the other person and of the yeah, indian contract act we didn't know real authority apparent authority correct or no fiduciary relationship right yes sir yeah mr sham owned a motor car he approached mr vikas and offered to sell his motor car for 3 lakhs mr sham told mr vikas that the motor car is running at the rate of 30 kilometers per liter of petrol both the fuel meter and the speed meter of the car were working perfectly mr vikas agreed with the proposal of mr sham and took delivery of the car by paying 3 lakh to mr sham after 10 days mr vikas came back with the car and stated that the claim made by mr sham regarding the fuel efficiency was not correct and therefore there was a case of misrepresentation referring to the provisions of the indian contract act 1872 decide and write whether mr vikas can resign the contract in the above ground see now listen here when we did misrepresentation we did one exception to misrepresentation when by ordinary diligence the person can find out whether the person stating the fact is true or not and even then if he buys it then it he cannot be held liable see they mentioned over here the fuel meter and something is working properly right what is it read that line the fuel meter and speedometer yes, both the fuel meter and the speed meter of the car was working perfectly no please so the stupid fellow should have checked up no by ordinary he would have read in the car for 1 km or 2 km and seen whether what mr sham is telling is correct or not not so he did not use his due diligence so whenever by ordinary diligence the person can find out whether the product is working properly and even then he doesn't do it you cannot hold the person liable for misrepresentation what you cannot hold the person liable for misrepresentation understood or no yes sir so yes this sir. is a little tricky case okay so be careful when you are reading you no know, sometimes the cases may be a little tricky next next you need for performance of a contract a full performance yeah x y and z jointly borrowed 90000 from l decide each of the following in the light of the indian contract act 1872 first sub question whether l can compel on uh, only y to pay the entire loan of 90000 sub can question compel? yes sir yeah because yes, remember sir. remember the liability is joint and several what the liability is joint and several and then sub question 2 whether l can compel only the legal representatives of y to pay the loan of 90000 if x y and z died yes sir yes 
Third sub question whether y and z are released from their liability to L and x is released from his liability to y and z for contribution if L releases x from his liability and sues y and z for payment. He can, no? He can. If he releases, he can sue y and z, but y and z can recover the money from x. What they can recover the money from? X. So it doesn't make any difference. He can say x, you go off. He'll claim 45, 45,000 from y and z, but y and z can again claim 15, 15,000 from? X. X. So it actually doesn't make any difference. Remember, we had done this. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Next question. X, Y and Z are partners in a firm. They jointly promise to pay 3 lakh to D. Y become insolvent and his private assets are sufficient to pay one-fifth of his share of debt. One-fifth, one-fifth. Remember, um, who, who became insolvent? Y became oh. insolvent. So he had to pay 1 lakh. He could recover only one-fifth, means 20,000. The remaining 80,000 should be borne by both X and Z. By Z. So remember, 80,000, 40,000 will be taken by X, 40,000 will be taken by Y, by Z, whatever. So the amount payable by X and Z will be 1 lakh 40, 1 lakh. Understood or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or yes, sir. one fifth is recovery, 20,000. How much is the remaining 3 lakhs minus 20,000? 2 lakh 80. 2 lakh 80 thousand divided by x and z. 1 lakh 40, 1 lakh. Go to the next question. Leave all this rubbish. Then x received certain goods from y and promised to pay 60,000. Later on, x expressed his inability to make payment. Z, who is known to x, pays 40,000 to y on behalf of x. However, x was not aware of this of the payment. Now, y is intending, intending to sue x. For the amount of 60,000, no, can Y do so? Advanced? So remember, acceptance made by a third party is valid acceptance. No? So now he can accept only 20,000 because he's already accepted 40,000 from a third. Third party, sir. Who okay. can perform a contract? We had done, right? Remember, promises, joint promises, third party, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, so refer that, okay? I'm not telling you the sections here, but it doesn't mean you won't write the sections. If you can remember the sections, please write the... Section numbers. Section, section numbers. What puja are you understanding? Yes, sir. Which college you are joining? Sir, Jane. Evening college? Yes, sir. Or, or day college? Evening. Evening, eh? okay, good. You have already paid the fees and all? Yes, sir. How much is it? Evening college fees, sir, Jane? Sir, uh, 50, around 50, 60. Okay, that's okay. Hmm. okay, go to the next one. Mr. Rich as aspired to get a self-portrait made by an artist. He went to the workshop of Mr. C, an artist, and asked whether he could sketch the former's, por former's portrait on oil painting canvas. Mr. C agreed to the offer and asked for 50,000 as full advance payment for the above creative work. Mr. C clarified that the painting shall be completed in 10 settings and shall take three months. On reaching, on reaching to the workshop for the sixth sitting, Mr. Rich was informed that Mr. C became paralyzed and would not be able to paint for near future. Mr. C had a son, Mr. K, who was still pursuing his studies and had not... Now, can, I, can anybody, can a legal representative complete the contract for personal nature? No, no sir. No, sir. So, if it was loan or if it was supply of goods, it's okay. But if it is for painting a picture, singing, it cannot be? Done, sir, because done. it is based on only skills. Yeah, and very good. Very good, very good. Okay, so this is also gone. So C is gone. Next. So he cannot claim that. Read that answer or there you'll get. I'm giving you the gist of the answers, okay? A contract hmm. which involves the use of personal skill or is founded on personal consideration comes to an end on the death of the promiser. As regards any other contract, the legal representatives of the deceased promiser are bound to perform it unless a contrary intention appears from the contract, section 37 of the Indian Contract Act 1872. But their liability under a contract is limited to the value of the property. Oh, why are you reading all this? So you this is a question. To the answer. No, no, no. Read the next question. Read that. X, Y, and Z jointly borrowed 50,000. Okay, leave the same from... thing. No. Hmm. Is it the same type of question? One died, one became insolvent? Yes. Okay, leave that. That we have discussed, right? 
So should I read the next question, sir? Please read the next question. The best, the basic rule is that the promiser must perform exactly what he has promised to perform. Explain stating the obligation of the parties of the contract. This also you can read from the study material. Hmm. Unit five: breach of contract and remedies. Ooh, breach. Hmm. M limited contract with Shanti traders to make the deliver to make and deliver certain machinery to them by uh, that June thirtieth, two thousand seventeen, for eleven point five lakhs. Due to labor strike, M limited could not manufacture and deliver the machinery to Shanti traders. Later, Shanti traders procured the machinery from another manufacturer for twelve point seven five lakhs. Due to this, Shanti Traders was also prevented from performing a contract which it had made with Zenith Traders at the time of their contract with M Limited and were compelled to pay compensation for breach of contract. Advise Shanti Traders the amount of compensation which it can claim from M Limited, referring to the legal provisions of the Indian Contract Act, eighteen seventy two. So remember, there are two types of damages which I discussed with you. One was ordinary damages. One was special damages. What is the difference? Can anybody remember? Where are the boys gone? No boys in the class. In ordinary damage, the value of the good or the good can be replaced. Sir, special damages, it is, it can be, but it takes a huge lot of time, and we can't get it elsewhere. Where you learned all this? Chumma and all you're telling. What's high tech? Just you're not studying, huh? Is it wrong, sir? Yes, wrong, wrong. High tech, you need remember. I'm not telling like that, but you should understand that ordinary damages are the difference between the contract. What you told about ordinary damages is correct. That it is a damage which is in the normal course of business. The difference between the contract price here. See, they agreed to supply the machine for eleven point five lakhs. And but they couldn't complete it, and they had to pay buy it from somebody at twelve point seven five lakhs. So the ordinary damages will be one point two five lakhs, right? What are special damages is now they also had lost a contract with Zenit Traders. That's what they're saying, and they are claiming compensation for that also. Suppose two lakh worth of contract is lost, can they claim that two lakhs also from M Limited? No. Why? Because they did not inform M Limited that they will lose a certain sum of money if they don't supply the. Machinery. Remember, we had done that case of Hadley versus Baxendale. Yes, sir. Where that shaft, that shaft of the windmill. So they could claim ordinary damages, loss of production, but they cannot claim any special damages because they did not inform that we will suffer such a. So special damages can be claimed only if you inform the person. See, if you don't supply the machinery, we will not only lose the money for not getting the goods, but because we are entering into a contract, we will. Also lose some additional amount. Only then you can claim special damages. What? Only then you can claim special damages. Now you remember Tejasini? Yes, sir. You forgot, huh? No, sir. Now I recollect. Study, study, Tejasini. We are expecting rank from you in foundation also, right? Thank you, sir. You put your this thing. Start reading. Okay. Sure, Because in the in. The, Other subjects, you know, they they can give marks like English and all that. But in law, if you write the wrong answer, they will think that you don't know the concept. They will not give marks. Correct or no? Law is like they you have to know the correct answer only. It's not like English or something where you can somewhere bluff an answer and get through that answer. Okay. Okay, sir. What sir. do you say, Kirtana? Yes, sir. You can bluff, ah. Huh? No, sir. We can't bluff. We mm -hmm. should study for both subjects. Ah, uh, if you study. Next, Viksha. What is the law relating to determination of compensation and breach of contract? Uh, this again, same in... ordinary damages, special damages. Okay, next. What do you mean by quantum merit and state the causes? Okay, this also uh, goes to quantum merit is as much as is done, and we have different cases for that. Okay, so just read through all this. These are all there. These are direct questions in your question paper. Next. X entered into a contract with Y to supply him one thousand water bottles at five per water bottle to be delivered at a specified time. Thereafter, X contracts 
with Z for the purchase of 1000 water bottles at 4.50 per water bottle and at the same time told Z that he did so for the purpose of performing his contract entered into with Y. Z failed to perform his contract in due course and market price of each water bottle on that day was 5.25 water bottle. Consequently, X could not procure any water bottle and Y resigned the contract. Calculate the amount of damages which X could claim from Z in the circumstances. What would be your answer if Z had not informed about the Y's contract explained with reference to the provisions of Indian Contract Act 1872? Very confusing, but I'll just explain it to you in simple terms. See, there's one guy called X, okay? Now, let's say Viksha Vijay is X. She, uh, Vaishnavi, Devi Vaishnavi has told her, you have to supply me 1,000 water bottles, correct? No? So she told Devi Vaishnavi, I'll supply you 1,000 water bottles, like 5 rupees per bottle, right? Now, Viksha Vijay tells Tejasuni, please, can you supply me water bottles, 1,000 water bottles? Sai Tejasuni says, uh, how much? She says that 4.5 rupees per bottle. And she tells Sai Tejasuni that I'm going to buy these 1,000 bottles from you and supply it to Vaishnavi at 5 rupees. So Tejasuni knows that She's buying it from her at 4 rupees 50 paisa and selling it to Vaishnavi at 5 rupees. Now on the due date, Tejaswini doesn't perform a contract. And Vaishnavi cancels the contract. How much compensation can Viksha claim from Tejaswini? Because she's told Tejaswini that the price of the water bottle at which she's going to supply to Vaishnavi is 5 rupees. She can claim only 5 minus 4.5, that is 500 rupees. What it is? 0.5 into 1000, that is? 500 rupees. But if Viksha wouldn't have told Tejaswini that she's going to supply Vaishnavi at 5 rupees, she can claim ordinary damages. That is the difference between the contract price and the market price. What is the market price? 5.25. So she'd say 5.25 minus 4.5 is 0.75 into 1000. That is 750 rupees. But since she informed Tejaswini, she can claim only 500 rupees. Or she can claim only 500. 0.5 per bottle. If she wouldn't have informed, she could have claimed the difference between Market price. So remember this again special damages and ordinary damages. damages yeah. Viksha. The next is unit six contingent and quasi contracts. Quasi. Hmm. Quasi contracts. Explain the term contingent contract with this reference to the Indian contract. So remember always opening body conclusion. I've already told you. I've wasted half an hour in explaining how you write the paper, writing it. So don't ask later, sir, how do we write business law? You write with your hand. Correct or no? And you write the same way as you're writing other theory papers. Because every time, no, before the exam, no, everybody will ask the same question. How do we write business law? I feel like telling them you take your mouth and learn how to write with your mouth. Mouth painting. You know mouth painting? Those people who don't have hands and all, no, they'll do mouth painting. Have you seen that? They'll yeah. do foot painting also. Hmm. Mm. Mr. X. Is, yeah, Mr. X. Mr. X, a businessman, has been fighting a long drawn litigation with Mr. Y, an industrialist. To support his legal campaign, he enlists the services of Mr. C, a judicial officer, stating that the amount of 10 lakhs would be paid to him if he does not take up the brief of Mr. Y. Mr. C agrees, but at the end of the litigation, Mr. X refuses to pay to Mr. C. Decide whether the decide whether Mr. C can recover the amount promised by Mr. X under the provisions of the Indian Contract Act, 1872. Read the answer, my line. This thing, this he cannot claim, but in then read. The problem asked in the question is based on Section 10 of the Indian Contract Act, 1872. The section says that all agreements are contracts if they are made by the free consent of the parties com competent to contract. See, every for time, no, for a breach of contract, you can always quote Section 10 because Section 10 says, it mentions, remember Section 10 mentions all the essentials of a valid contract. Contract, okay, read on. for a lawful consideration and with the lawful object and are not expressly declared to be void. Further, Section 23 also states that every agreement of which the object is unlawful is void. Accordingly, one of the essential elements of a valid contract in the light of, in the, light of the said provision is that the agreement entered into the must entered into 
must not be which must not be which the law declares to be either illegal or void an illegal agreement is an agreement expressly or impliedly prohibited by law a void agreement is one without any legal effects the given instance is a case of interference with the course, the course of justice remember agreements in agreement supposed to public policy you cannot bribe a judge or a lawyer or a judicial officer to give a judgment in your Favor. Uh, so remember, there are three things in agreements in a public policy which I told you look similar, but they are not the same. One is agreements interfering with the court of justice, course of justice. Second is agreements stifling prosecution, and third one is what was the third one? Uh, oh. There's another another thing with law only, right? Uh, agreements in restraint of legal proceedings. What in restraint of legal? What's the difference in restraint of legal proceedings? You tell that when we are making the contract, we will not go to court if we anybody disob uh, dishonors the contract. That is called agreements in restraint of legal proceedings. It's null and void. There's only one exception to that. That is arbitration. I've explained to you. Agreement stifling prosecution basically means you tell that person not to file a case against you. You put some acid on somebody and you tell him don't put a case against me. I'll give you one lakh rupees. That is called agreement stifling. Prosecution and yes. agreements interfering with the course of justice is basically bribing the lawyer or the judge to give the judgment in your favor or not to fight the case on anybody else's favor. So all these three are important, but they are similar, but they are not the same. But they are similar, but they are not the same. Same. Yeah. Next. So all the theory. So next question. X found a wallet in a restaurant. He inquired of all the customers present there, but the true owner could not be found. He handed over the same to the manager of the restaurant to keep till the true owner is found. After a week, he went back to the restaurant to inquire about the wallet. The manager refused to return it back to X. Oh, this is that again saying that the ring ring case, right? So now remember, the finder of the wallet is the true owner. So he can file a case against the restaurant owner to get take back the wallet, or to take back the wallet, because the person who finds the good is the bailer of the goods till he finds the person who's lost. So the restaurant owner has no right over the wallet. Wallet. Understand? No? Yes. We had done. There's a case. I forget the name of the case, but it was there. It's there in your study material also. Understand? Next, next, go. Move. X, a minor, was studying in MCom in a college. On first July two thousand nineteen, he took a loan of one lakh from B for payment of his college fees and to purchase books, and agreed to repay by thirty first December two thousand nineteen. X possesses assets worth nine lakhs. On due date, X fails to pay back the loan to B. B now wants to recover the loan from X out of his assets. Referring to the provisions of Indian yes, contract. Yes, remember quasi contract. Any liability for me and here minors studying for MCom and for any books is a necessity of life, right? So remember, the minor will not be held personally liable, but the assets of the minor can be attached for the purpose of the recovery point. of the money. So here, remember, not only food and clothing, but also education is considered as a necessary. Necessity of necessity of life. Life, yeah. The next is chapter two: the sale of goods. Come act. on, sale of goods act. We'll see. Unit one some... formation. Hmm. Unit one formation of the contract of sale. Hmm. What are the rules which regulate the sale of sale by auction under the sale of goods act? This is again a theory question. Please go through the theory questions. Mister R. Yes. Sir. Hmm. Mr. R owns a two-wheeler, which she handed over to her friend, Miss K, on sale or return basis. Even after a week, Miss K neither returned the vehicle nor made payment for it. She instead pledged the vehicle to Mr. A to obtain a loan. Mr. R now wants to claim the two-wheeler from Mr. A. Will she succeed? No. So question one. Mm -hmm. Examine whether examine with reference to the provisions of the Sale of Goods Act of 1930, 
what recourse is available to miss miss r and sub second sub question would you would your answer be different if it had been expressly provided that the vehicle would remain the property of miss r until the price has been paid so now two things are here now whenever you sell goods on return basis when does the property in the goods gets transferred from the seller to the buyer and explain to you one when the buyer tells the seller that he wants to buy the property second is when he keeps it for a reasonably long period of time thirdly when he acts in a way which is inconsistent with the ownership of the goods now here miss k has pledged the goods with a that means indirectly automatically the property in the goods gets transferred from the seller to the buyer 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 because she's uh, mrs k is acting inconsistent with the ownership now once the goods pass from the seller to the buyer who's the owner of the goods now mrs k so when oh. she pledges it with a now the goods are the property of k so r cannot recover the money from a she can only she cannot recover the bike or whatever from a she can only file a case for the price against k for only the price against understood yes sir Yes. Sir. However, if it would have been mentioned clearly that the property in the goods will sale on goods or return or cash basis, in that case the property would have still been in the name of R and she could have recovered the property from A. But since it was not mentioned, therefore now she cannot recover the property from A. Yeah. Yeah. Got it or no? Yes. Yeah. Next. J, the owner of a Fiat car, wants to sell his car. For this, for this purpose, he hands over the car to P, a mercantile agent, for sale at price not less than fifty thousand. The agent sells the car for forty thousand to A, who buys the car in good faith and without notice of any fraud. P misappropriated the money also. J sues A. to recover the car decide given reasons whether j would succeed remember we did the sale by a non owner when did the property become the property in, i remember we had done sale by a non owner that was not in this chapter towards the end of this chapter we had done right when you are selling goods through a mercantile agent and the person buys it in good faith and all he is acting in the ordinary course of business and the document of title of goods is transferred then even if the buyer buys it and even though the mercantile agent did not have the property right to sell the goods the new buyer will get a good title or the new buyer will get a good did you all remember that we done it towards the end of sale of goods act yes or no yes sir yes sir see now maruti is, is let's say viksha is the maruti car agent maruti told her uh, means maruti car company maruti uh told her don't sell any alto car for less than 2 lakhs now let's say prathamesh goes to viksha and she sells it for 1 lakh she's acting she's not the owner of the goods she's acting on behalf of maruti but she was acting in the normal course of business and she transferred the document of title of goods to prathamesh in that case prathamesh will get a good title maruti can't go and ask prathamesh to give back the car what cannot ask the case this was the case we had done folky versus king what it was called folky versus king so here the mercantile agent even though is misappropriated prathamesh the new buyer will get a good title and maruti or that company cannot recover the car so the same case but they've changed the names what they've changed the names names okay next next quickly quickly viksha we have run out of time but we still have to do go for the purpose of making uniform for the employees mr yadav bought dark blue colored cloth from vivek but did not disclose to the seller the purpose of said purchase mm -hmm. when the uniforms were prepared and used by the employees the cloth was found unfit however there was evidence that the cloth was fit for caps boots and carriage lining advise mr yadav whether he is entitled to have any remedy under the sale of goods no. act 1930 whenever you are buying goods you must state the purpose for which you are buying the goods so if he did not state the purpose that it is made for uniform he cannot claim compensation if he would have told it he could have claimed 
compensation compensation because it's good for making caps how does the supplier of material know whether he is making caps or whether he is making uniforms correct next one ram sells 200 bales of clothes to sham and sends 100 bales of 100 bales by lorry and 100 bales by railway sham receives delivery of 100 bales sent by lorry but before he receives the delivery of the bale sent by railway he becomes bankrupt ram being still unpaid stops the goods in transit the official receiver on sham's insolvency claims the goods decide the case with reference to the provisions of the sale no. of goods act the, the official receiver cannot recover the goods because once a person is insolvent you can stop the goods in transit even transit. though part of the goods have been already delivered what even though parts of the goods have already been delivered deliver so ram has every right to stop the goods in transit and the official receiver of the insolvent party cannot recover the goods next one quickly Me measures woodworth and associates a firm dealing with the wholesale and retail buying and selling of various kinds of wooden logs customized as per the requirement of the customers they dealt with rose wood mango wood teak wood burma wood etc mr das a customer came to the shop and asked for wooden logs measuring 4 inches broad and 8 feet long as required by the carpenter mr das specifically mentioned that he required the wood which would be best suited for the purpose of making wooden doors and window frames the shop owner agreed and arranged the wooden pieces cut into as per the buyer's requirements the carpenter visited mr das house next day and he found that the seller has supplied mango tree wood which would most which would most unsuitable for the purpose the carpenter asked mr das to return the wood wooden logs as it as it would not meet his requirements the shop owner refused to return return the wooden logs on the plea that logs were cut to specific requirements of mr das and hence could not be resold explain the duty of the buyer as well as the seller according to the doctrine of caveat emptor whether mr das would be able to get the money back or the right kind of wood as required serving his purpose see here remember we did one of the implied condition as to quality of fitness when the buyer relies on the skill and judgment of the seller and the seller is dealing with those type of goods in that case there is an implied condition as to quality of fitness and if the goods do not supply as per the quality of fitness they can be returned now here remember the buyer asked the seller i want to use it for door frames and for houses please supply me the best wood but this person supplied him good which was not suitable for that right so since if if basically cavi tempter if he would have just told give me wood i just want wood in this frame and then he would have supplied it then there would have been cavi tempter but here since he told him the reason or the purpose for which he is buying the goods and even then the supply supplied him inferior variety of goods there cannot be any understood or no right so here the buyer can claim the compensation from the seller seller understood yes sir because you relied on the quality or judgment so remember i am just telling you the answers but in the exam you will follow that facts of the case provisions correct or no analysis and conclusion conclusion, conclusion. Mm -hmm. next Mrs Geeta went to the local rice and wheat wholesale shop and asked for 100 kg of basmati rice the shopkeeper quoted the price of the same as 125 per kg to which she agreed to which she agreed Mrs Geeta insisted that she would like to see the sample of what will be provided to her by the shopkeeper before she agreed upon such purchase The shopkeeper showed her a bowl of rice as sample. The sample exactly corresponded to the entire lot. The buyer examined the sample casually without noticing the fact that even though the sample was that of basmati rice, but it contained a mix of long and short grains. The cook, on opening the bags, complained that the dish, if prepared with the rice, would not would not taste the same as the quality of rice was not as per requirement of the dish. Now Mrs Geeta wants to file a suit of fraud against the seller alleging 
him of selling mix of selling mix of good and cheap quality rice will she be successful explain the basic law on on sale of sample under sale of goods act 1930 decide the fate of the case and options open to the buyer for grievances redressal as per the provisions of sale of goods act 1930 what would be your answer in case of mrs geeta specified her exact requirement as to the length of rice now see uh, one more time sometimes the questions are very long and they ask you three three questions okay in that now when they ask you three three questions i have told you you may not follow the same provisions facts analysis conclusion because here they have asked you three questions right how many questions have they asked you Viksha, yes, sir. Three questions. So you write the answer one. You write the question was asked this one. So ask. So when there are multiple questions asked in the same case. Oh God, my.
ओके एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर यार यस सर कंटिन्यू कंटिन्यू आई नो इट्स अ लिटिल लॉन्ग फॉर यू ऑल बट जस्ट फिनिश दिस ऑफ नो देन वी डोंट हैव टू वरी टू मच ओके कंटिन्यू वेयर आर यू डूइंग सर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन हम Mr Amit was shopping in a self service supermarket he picked up a bottle of cold drink from a shelf while he was examining the bottle he, it exploded in his hand and injured him he files a suit for damages against the owner of the market on the ground of breach the owner the owner of the market on the ground of breach yeah so this one also we had discussed this case right in packaging is a part of quality of fitness just read the answer no viksha Yes, sir. Hmm. Essential of essentials of sale. The problem, as given in the question, is based on Section sixteen, subsection two hmm. hmm. of the Sale of Goods Act, nineteen thirty, hmm. which states that where goods are brought by description from a seller hmm. who deals in goods of the description, hmm. whether he is the manufacturer or producer or not, there is an implied condition that the goods shall be shall be of mercant mercantable quality. Hmm. Though the term marketable quality is not defined in the act, it means it means that in the present case, the bottle must be properly sealed. In other words, if the goods are purchased for self-use, they should be reasonably fit for the purpose for which it is being used. In the instant case, on an examination yeah, of the so bottle, so if it is not fit for being used, no. Remember, this is again quality of fitness, correct? So if they are not fit for use, if the Packing is not proper. If it explodes, then the person can claim damages. What he can claim? Compensation. Compensation. Next, next, next. Unit three: transfer of ownership and delivery of goods. Mm -hmm. Mr. G sold some goods to Mr. H for certain price by issue of an invoice, but payment in respect of the same was not received on that day. The goods were packed and lying in the go down of Mr. G. The goods. were inspected by hs agent and were found to be in order later on the dues of the goods were settled in cash just after receiving cash mr g asked mr h that goods should be taken away from his go down to enable him to store other goods purchased by him after one day since mr h did not take delivery of the goods mr g kept the goods out of the go down in an open space Due to rain, some goods okay, were damaged. Okay. Now, one more thing, all of you. Can you all go through these other cases on your own? This unit three and unit four. And if you all have any doubts, you all will ask me. Is that okay with you, all of you all? Sir, yes. Sir. If you have doubts, how to come back to me, sir? Okay. Now there are two ways. I'm going to give you my mobile number, and also I'll give you my email ID. Is that okay? If you're okay. calling me in the mobile, also you call me up. Even if I Uh, don't pick it up. You just send me an SMS. I don't. I'm not on WhatsApp. Okay, that sir, I'm Keetana from the CPT batch. So please, if I don't pick up, usually I'll pick up the call. Even even I'm busy, I'll call you back. Is that okay with you all? Okay. Yes, sir. No? Okay. So I'll leave my mobile number with uh, whom do you want to take it from? You'll take it from Chinmay, or I'll should I tell it in class? Anybody has any doubt? You'll ask Chinmay my mobile number, or you'll you'll have a number, right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. If you all take it from her, and I think so, the she will give it to you. So you tell I have a doubt. So she will give you my number, and I will immediately answer you. And I'll also leave my email ID. You can write down my email name, or you send me a mail, sir. I want to talk to you. Please call me up, and this is my number. Okay, is that okay? And then I'll only call you up. Is that okay with you all? Hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So I'll give you my email ID. Write it down. It's kmrajdeep at gmail dot com. K for Karnataka, M for Mysore, R A J D W E P at gmail dot com. K M Rajdeep at एम राजदीप एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम ओके सो सेंड मी अ मेल आई एम सो एंड सो प्लीज सर कैन यू कॉल मी अपन सचन सचन अब आई कॉल यू बैक एंड वील डिस्कस दी आंसर ओके गॉट इट 
otherwise also you can call yes. me and they'll give you my number you don't have to worry my number is not so precious and all just like uh, so any time you can ask in me or even i think so sai tejasini has my number right yes sir sai tejasini has my number who else has Oh, hi, hi. What's your name? Vairalakshmi. Ah, uh, Vairalakshmi also has. So anybody can contact any of them, send a message to them. They'll give you my number. Got it or no? Got it. Yes, sir. Okay. So all the best for your exams. Do well. As I've told you, follow what I've told. We'll meet again when we are doing R to R and all that. Okay. Study well. Got it. Hmm? Thanks. Yes, sir. So writing sections and all. If we remember, uh, we can write. If we don't remember, can we leave off those section numbers? Leave off, leave. Just leave off. Don't write wrong sections. That's all. Understand? Okay. Okay. Whatever you remember, you write. If you don't remember, don't write it. You write as per the provisions of the law. That's all. Got it? Okay, sir. As per the provisions of the Indian Contract Act, or as per the provision of the Sale of Goods Act, nineteen thirty. Got it? Yes, sir. Only if in question they mention okay. the section number also, we'll also mention in that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Okay. All of y'all, thank you so much. Best of luck, right? Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank sir. you, sir. Thank 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 you, sir.